Power 5 conference game by going 7 for 12 for 38 yards, winning 27 to 24. They would have said you're out of your mind, man. And you know what the craziest thing is? After that game, ESPN and and these other uh, networks are still talking about, are still asking if it's going to be sustainable. If you can win and compete in the Big 12 with this. I'm like, guys, you just saw what they did to USC. USC with yeah. uh, with Miller Moss or whatever the quarterback's name is. And, you know, all yeah. the weapons they got with Lincoln Riley and Zachariah Branch. And they just controlled the, the entire game. Yeah. you Dude, you saw the same thing with Patrick Willis at Green Bay. They changed their scheme. Yeah. They're, they're implementing single wings. Stuff you haven't seen since the 60s. Yeah. And they're implementing it, and it's effective, and it's working. Because, like you said, you know, we've gone so far to the left that we're starting to go back to the right. You know, it's a full circle. You know, when defenses get so small yeah. and so fast, you're going to start running the ball and grabbing it. Yep. 100%, dude. Oh, dude, that, that Dallas game yesterday was almost – it almost felt like it should have – an illegal like cut from the the stream like the stream should have been cut off what was happening to that dallas front seven was crime i, I like you i love the scheme i love the fact that Der- but derrick henry is not even good out of the shot he's the uh, uh, offensive line for baltimore it was just i'm beating you up man it wasn't anything particularly eye-popping uh, same thing for Michigan, I, but crazy thing. I was that that play um, that uh, in the fourth quarter when Collins broke it for like sixty yards or something. He didn't score, but he got down at the ten. Hey, they're putting tight ends in the slot yeah. to to come in jet motion and kick out defensive ends. It's unbelievable, you know, man. You know, the first team I saw do that in never... college was Todd Munkin and Brock Bowers, and now like you're, yeah, you're talking yeah, about yeah, the Ravens. Yeah. Todd, Todd Munkin's OC at the Ravens. Yeah, yeah. And so you can. This is this is the example of what good coaching does. Even when he leaves college, they're stealing his schemes, still running them. And then yeah. you know, fast forward to him at the Ravens, he's getting the job done with the power run there, using the fullback, like you said, 12, 13 personnel, twenty two personnel, twenty one yeah. per, all heavy personnel. You do not see this stuff as frequently in the NFL, barring a, a couple of teams. But for the most part. You know, you don't see teams have this much success with what the Ravens are doing. Yeah, I mean, you it's almost like you have to because when you watch these quarterbacks play, man, they so many just can't push the ball down the field. They just can't. Yeah. And defenses have come around to where – and then you get uh, Mel Kuyper coming on and making the worst take in the history of television. Yeah. But defenses <laughs> are adjusting. They're playing soft. They're playing cover two. They're letting you have everything five yards and shorter. So – are just going to take that yeah. all day long. So these quarterbacks are playing in these systems uh, in high school and in college, and then they get to the NFL, and then they're asking Bryce Young to make twenty-five yard corner routes. It's like yeah. he's not he's not going to be able to do it. It's just not what he does. Jalen Milrow is like a, a very weird example of a guy who actually does have the ability to do stuff like that in this new age. Who also nickels and dimes and can run. It's a very weird thing, but yeah, I mean. These guys just are not built for that. Jane Daniels isn't built for that. Uh, C.J. Stroud somewhat can do it. But they, they're just not pushing the ball because they haven't been asked to. Then they bring the hammer down on these guys. It's like, what do you expect? Yeah, and you know, one thing I think that, that plays a big part in that is the lack of development from these guys coming from college to the NFL because we're talking about NIL and the offenses in college. And if we're talking about the offenses in college, you and me have talked about this at nausea. The you're see you're pretty much seeing the same stuff. It's all Steve Sarkeesian stuff that he made you know popular with the Wolfback oh. eleven personnel. You know split zone. Lincoln Riley. Exactly. You're seeing it's all the same stuff, and you know it's very effective yeah. when you're going against college teams. But when you're ta- when you take it to the next level into the NFL, you're gonna have to be asked to read defenses, the checks. It's a lot more that you have to do. And these guys coming from college aren't getting developed, you know, sitting like Aaron Rodgers did under Brett Favre or like Tom Brady did. Like Bryce Young's being asked to come in and do all this stuff that he doesn't even do, and it's coming out of the front office in Carolina. He doesn't even have, like, really the confidence or, or, you know, like he's not uh, an extrovert enough to go and take over the team as a leader. And then we see Andy Dalton come in and throw for, what, three touchdowns, 300 yards? 
But it's not that he has so much more skill than Bryce Young as much as it is experience in these systems and knowing what to do. Yeah. But that's where the development comes in. So, see, now my thing yeah, with the Panthers, 100%. you got Bryce Young lost all of his confidence now. I mean, he's like a shell yeah. of himself. He's still making some good yeah. plays, but it's not the Bryce Young from college. He gets benched. Yeah. Andy Dalton, the Red Rocket, comes in and slices and dices. Knox, what if we just would have had Andy Dalton come in and start for a season 12 games, have Bryce Young learn, yeah. what, watch? None of this would have happened. Should have been, yeah, it should have been flip flopped 100%. It's. To t- like you have you have the West Coast guys like Herbert is used to this they they yeah. did this at at Oregon especially pre landing so he was used to these kinds of systems Joe Burrow was used to pushing the ball down the field but these new it's just it's becoming so short nowadays and they're especially even in high school man like nobody pushes the ball down no. the field in high school nobody nobody. It's all screens, it's all out routes, it's all slants, it's all option routes, it's all RPO. That's all they're doing, and they're spread out completely. And then you're asking these guys to make clutch, throw clutch fades, like 30-yard fades at this. But then you have Andy Dalton, who was developed in these systems. He played in a pro-style offense, and he's rolling out to his right with a guy right here throwing it into double coverage throwing it right in the bread basket and you're like holy shit the red rocket but it's like it's like you said man it's development but yeah i, I don't know man I, I hate that i don't have as much time to watch college games as i do nfl games so i know because i work saturday night so most of the time i'm catching all the noon games and then i got to go back and rewatch uh all the highlights for uh the college games later on but it, I'm able to catch a lot of these NFL games because we keep them on, on Sundays but you know the thing yeah. you saw the Ravens Cowboys game you did see that yeah uh, that yeah. that that game drew a lot of similarities to me as a Tennessee fan watching that game and watching the Tennessee Oklahoma game because you know the Ravens were up 28 yeah. to 6 going into the fourth quarter you know that three possession game in the fourth quarter with the style offense of offense that we that they run you know which we just talked about they're going to run and ground and pound you would think that they're going to yeah. eat the clock and control the game with that but no the momentum sh- shifted to the Cowboys and when it shifted to the Cowboys it looked like the Cowboys were in complete control of that game in the fourth quarter it's crazy and crazy you know i say all that to say this you cannot call plays not to lose. You have to call plays yeah. to win for the entirety of a game. You can't get a lead and start sitting on it trying to call plays not to lose and hold on to a lead, especially in the NFL. That lead's gone. You have to keep your foot on that team's throat through the entirety of the game, or, or what ha- almost happened to the Ravens will happen to you. They And they're notorious for blowing leads. They yeah. they did it against Vegas last week. They did it probably five times last year. Yeah. All of a, is all of a sudden, Dallas gets the onside kick, and they're like, "Oh my God, we we have a chance to win this game." And then instead of dialing up pressure, they're they're just sitting on their heels, playing super deep, and they're still getting torn up by C.D. Lamb for thirty five yards. Yeah, it's like it's 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 a you're right about the play calling but it's also from a player's point of view and a coach like from a coaching point of view these guys are professionals how are they and i even on both sides for dallas when they're down 28 to 6 you the camera pans to parsons and cd lamb and they're like outing and sitting on the bench like this and i'm like are you fucking kidding me you're some of the highest paid players in the nfl and then on the Raven side of the ball, it's like they're sitting there. They're just confident and comfortable no matter how many times they've blown leads in the past. And they're still sitting like it, it blows my mind because it's so it's so simple. Yeah, like, I agree. And you, you know, guys, that, you all, all of you guys. have Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, like you were saying, uh, whenever the Ravens were sitting back in coverage, you know, sending three, four guys. I've never been a fan of in the two minute defensively. Uh, dropping eight or dropping seven. Now, of course, so you're going you're gonna to have to drop six, seven guys in a two minute. You're going to have to mix it up, but do exactly that. Yeah. Mix it up. You know this. In the two yeah. minute, everything is simplified. It's your seven or eight quick game yeah. plays, and it's your defense's yeah. seven or eight, you know, base plays, right? If you allow a quarterback to just sit there, an NFL quarterback making, you know, one of the. T- 
Say what you want about Dak. I'm not the biggest Dak guy. Nonetheless, he's a top 10, 12 quarterback in the league. You can't give a guy time like that with just sending three at him to just sit there and find windows because he's going to find windows. And like you said, CeeDee Lamb is going to find windows if he has all day to do it. It's impossible to cover anybody for four, five, six, seven, eight seconds. I don't care how good you are in your coverage. So, yeah, the passive play, Colin, and then the lackadaisical, uh, you know, What's what's the word the uh, the just the just the spirit of the Ravens team like you said nonchalant yeah. the only person who looked like it yeah. took it personal and sounded like they took it personal after the game was Lamar and that's why I've always been the biggest fan yeah. uh, a big fan of him is because he is going to keep those yeah. guys you know locked in and focused on the goal and hopefully they can figure that out because like we were talking about earlier the way that their team is built you would think that they're built to close games but you know yeah hundred percent yeah. That makes no sense to me. Yeah, with how they were running the ball in the first half, and then, but instead of mixing it up and and running jet sweeps and zone reads, they just started handing Derrick Henry the ball out of the shotgun, which he's not used to doing, and playing super. It, it was, and they still did let Lamar throw the ball on third and seven in, in the first half of that game, and then all of a sudden they're just like, no, we're just gonna sit on our heels and run. And Dallas is extremely explosive, and then they just. All of a sudden, they're back in the game, but I don't know that that should that should have been a fucking forty-two to ten type game. Yeah, and for sure. Yeah, they should have closed that. It up. wasn't. Nonetheless, yeah. they got their but, first uh, win though, because they were zero and two. They should have beat the Chiefs yeah. in Week One, like you said. They blew that lead to the Raiders and almost blew this one to the Cowboys, but they were able to get it done. Um, but one more uh. thing. Okay. Your Heisman front runner. Who do you like for the Heisman right now? I'm going to go ahead and let you know who I like. Off all the film I've watched, you know, Tennessee fan, I'm watching all of Nico. I'm watching a lot of Shador. Yeah. I watched the Boise State running back. I watched him play Georgia Southern, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Oregon. Yeah. Fuck. But my oh, number shit. one guy right now has to be Cam Ward, quarterback from Miami. Yep. Yeah. Okay. His, his timing – not only on you know keeping the offense on time with where the, when the ball's coming out and where and where it's going, but his internal clock when he's getting pressured, his ability to extend plays and still look down the field and throw the ball accurately on the run, it's gorgeous. His footwork when he's getting pressured, it's second nature. You could tell those guys who get a little bit frantic whenever they get pressured and they can still make a play compared to the guy where it's like second nature. I mean. This is like what he does, and he has turned this Miami offense, Knox, from a team, you know, they've always been an average offensive team, but with Cam Ward, they're not doing anything different. They're not doing anything special. They went and got Damian Martinez uh, from Oregon State, the running back. They went and got a couple other guys, uh, uh, you know, Tyler Barron on the edge. So they filled their team up with, with guys from the portal, but they're not doing anything different schematically. And Cam Ward is just like the general for this team. And, you know, my favorite thing about him is how cool and calm he is. That is definitely yeah. going to trickle down to the rest of the team. They have an easy schedule. They don't play Clemson this year. Their toughest game left is Louisville. Just looking at how I think the numbers will go with this Miami offense and how good he's been doing, Cam Ward right now for me is my Heisman favorite, no doubt. I think if you're looking at it objectively, pragmatically, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's it's uh, Ward, it's Nico, it's Genty, uh, and Travis Hunter probably. Yeah, yeah, Travis. And my per and, and my and my personal opinion. I don't think this will happen because Colorado isn't going to win enough games for this to happen. But I think Travis Hunter is probably the best player in college football. I mean, it, you you can't sit here and be poised to win the Blitnikov and whatever the the defensive back award is. You can't be poised to win both of those at the same time. Play a hundred and thirty snaps. Yeah. Like if we're talking about a Heisman, that that's that's the pinnacle. That's yeah. unreal what he's doing. He's he, how, what is his touchdown interception number? It's ridiculous. I think it's like six and two. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's, it is. It's stupid. I, I, I think he's a court. You know, or I, you know, great points. First off, because I, I didn't even think about Travis Hunter, and I've been a little bit critical of the Heisman Award in years past because it's kind of pretty much just turned yeah. into a quarterback award. But you're 100 percent right. If we're just looking at who the 
who the most valuable player is, it's got to be Travis Hunter for Colorado. Yeah. I'm close. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Think, I think Cam Ward definitely. Ha- if you're talking like an MVP yeah. point of view, I think Cam Ward certainly has an argument there too. For a guy to go both ways and play 130 snaps, I think just that on his face is. Well, I have so many horrible opinions about, or I mean, uh, negative opinions about Colorado as a program. Yeah. But Travis Hunter is unreal. I'm trying to find. Real quick, while we're talking about uh, Colorado, I don't know how much you've seen of Colorado so far this season. I've watched all their games at least once. Their O line is the worst O line I've seen in FBS all year. Oh, it's awful. It's it's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah, they're and to and you also pair that with uh, Shador not getting rid of the ball fast enough either. Both of those, if you have both of those things happening, you it's a mess. Yeah. Absolute mess. Mixed with absolutely no run game, it's a miracle that they put points on their board. Their their D line is not even is not even a lick better than their O line. It really doesn't surprise me that they're not improving much because neither one of them can give the other a look at practice. They're both shit. Yeah. Um, so D line bringing in Warren Sapp too to coach him up. I mean, you know he's as knowledgeable as anybody when it comes to D line and pass rush, but yeah, you Dion just does not have the guys on the line on either side of the ball to uh, get any production yeah. from this Colorado team. It, it, does he just not I, – I don't understand. Is he just not recruiting them? They're, they're I, just I not going get there, it. man. They're just not going there. You know there's not – when it comes to O-linemen and, and D-linemen, those are the hardest guys to go get. There's only so many guys that are 6'6", yeah. 320, and can actually move. You know, they're going yeah. to, to Kirby Smart. They're going to, to, to Kalen DeBoer, you know. Yeah, I guess they just don't, or they're or out west, they're going to Dan Lanning. Yeah, yeah, you know? there you go. So. Shit, that's where I'd go. Whew. Even though they've had a rough yeah. start to the season so far, I think that they'll figure it out. Dylan Gabriel, he 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 wasn't playing bad. It, it was the rest of the team around. I mean, at least his he's a, stats, he, yeah. he's playing all right. He, he's improving every week, too. But watching that Boise State game, uh, really made me question that front seven. Gentry is an absolute beast, but that offensive line isn't anything to necessarily write home about. And you have Oregon with a Dan Lanning as a head coach who's seen as one of the best defensive minds in the in, in the whole in all of the nation. And they recruit at extremely high level. They have top five recruiting class on the defensive side of the ball and they can't stop the run to Boise State. That was super concerning for me for Oregon. Now they bounce back. They played really well against Oregon State, but when you when you're playing against these marquee elite teams, it really is going to make me question. Like when you play Texas, are you going to be able to stop the run against Texas or Georgia? Or, I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm, I don't know. I'm with you, and, and really we haven't. Or seen, even Utah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Really, we haven't seen this production uh, that you were talking about that we've come accustomed to seeing from Dan Lanning defenses really since he got at Oregon. Yeah. Hey, here, real quick. Your uh, camera's like, um, it's slow. I'm looking like, at it. I'm looking at it on OBS. It's cool point. from where I'm recording. It's it, both of ours are good. Okay. Okay. It might just be me. Okay. It might just not picking it up. But okay. um. I. Uh, but yeah. What were you saying? Uh, yeah. Atlantic. No, I mean, I think I pretty much wrapped up what I was saying about that. I um, Eventually, I want to go down and talk about the Louisville Cardinals. You saw me. I sent you that watching film about them yesterday. Um, here, do you want to wrap this? Want me to wrap this up real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm, uh, but that's going to wrap up this podcast, guys. Uh, let us know anything y'all want to talk about or want us to talk about. Leave that in the comments below. 